My name is uh, Fabio Vignoli, and I will present together with uh, with Barbara, my colleague. Uh, during these presentations, we're going to give you some insights about how Signify views management of cybersecurity for our products. So we will ask you some questions as well, so that you can help us understand who our audience is. And um, as uh, mentioned by our host, uh, at the end of the presentations, you will be given an opportunity to ask any questions. Let me go straight to um, the agenda for today. Now, um, so we are going to, to talk to you about uh, uh, product security to Signify. So the focus of our presentation is how we manage product security to Signify, what are our best practices and how they are uh, performed and they are executed within our company. We will go more in detail on um, one of the most important best practices, which is the security by design and our security development life cycles. Uh, we will also talk about Signify Shared Responsibility Model and a few other important topics. But first, before we really go into the um, crew of the topic, uh, let me uh, make a quick introduction about Signify. So, who, who, what is uh, who is Signify? Who are we? Yeah? So Signify is uh, uh, the world leader in light. Um, we produce high quality, energy efficient lighting products, uh, systems, and services in mainly three key areas. So we we, we really uh, focus on, on on lighting. We only do lighting, and we do light sources, luminaires, and systems and services. Um, we're the number one global leader in conventional LED and connected lighting systems and services. So in 2022, uh, we generated sales of about seven and a half billion, and we employ uh, 35,000 people in 74 countries. Now, core to our business, as mentioned over here in the slide, is sustainability. Not only um, our energy efficient portfolio, but also how we operate as a company. So Signify, in fact, has achieved 100% carbon neutrality in September 2020, and we help our customers to achieve that goal as well with our products. So speaking of our products, uh, it is important to, uh, to, to have a look at what we actually make. So we serve both the professional and the consumer market. So the professional markets account for about 75% of our sales and the offering comprise, comprise professional lighting products such as lamps and luminaires, professional systems such as our uh, Interact software suite, uh, professional services, uh, lighting design, consultancy, maintenance, management, life cycle services, and of course, consumer products, uh, um, lamps, luminaires, and smart home light systems, uh, which we still, which we sell with uh, our Philips Hue and and Wiz brands. Now, um, I'm specifically focusing in these presentations on um, our professional segments, and I'm responsible for uh, the professional uh, uh, as, uh, product security. So, for for the professional segments, we 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 look into. Um, we, we divide it according to a number of uh, different uh, areas, such as road and streets and tunnels, uh, uh, office, industry, uh, retail and hospitality, uh, landmarks, sports, agricultural, solar entertainment, and so on and so forth. Um, this gives pretty much a, an idea of what, uh, what we do. And then let me show you who we are. So let me get to the next slide. Uh, here's the both of us. So you can to uh, see it. Um, so my name is uh, is uh, Fabio Vignoli. I'm the head of product security for uh, um, uh, the, uh, the the digital solutions division. So we, as I said, we make uh, uh, security. We make uh, products for uh, for the professional market. I have a long background within the company. So I started working with uh, uh, what used to be Philips in 2001, and I worked myself. Uh, um, my, I worked my way through the company first in uh, in research, then in uh, software development, and eventually I joined the product security the product security team. Today I am responsible, and I have broad responsibility within uh, uh, Signify uh, uh, Digital Solutions for strategy, 
um, risk management and governance, application security, uh, manufacturing and supply chain security. Barbara, do you want to share yourself? Yeah, I will. Um, I'm a cybersecurity manager with over 25 years experience, and I have been working in many different organizations from insurance companies to having my own organization. Um, my last job before Signify was at ASML, and now since five years already, I'm application security manager at the corporate product security team. In that team, I'm responsible for defining the minimum product security requirements that we all need to adhere to, both for professional and for consumer products. And I'm also working on an extensive competence program to make sure that all our employees, and specifically the ones developing connected lighting systems, are skilled in uh, coding and secure development. I have been um, writing some articles and book, but that's already a while ago. And uh, as you can see from my avatar, I'm also a cyber mom and I coach young women in technology and security. And um, actually we call them my cyber babes, although the, um, that might not sound uh, uh, as good as it is, but these are really great women that are making a career in this area. Back to you, Fabio. Very good, thank you. Now, let's see first why, um, let me go straight to the matter. Let's see what, what is the reason why product security is so important for Signify and the lighting industry in general. So I think past of the days when, when lighting was easy, uh, just as easy as switching it on and off with a, with a switch, uh, switch on the wall that is. Uh, these days, uh, much of our sales are related to connected line points. This is uh, really the uh, most important um, elements, uh, most important markets for us. And connected uh, lighting is uh, the signifies way to provide customers uh, with an extended range of solutions and services uh, to address their needs. That is uh, in re related to smart cities, offices, um, retail and and a few of the other segments that I mentioned before. Now, to fulfill our promise to our customers, that our security promise to our customers, we want, we want to maintain the highest standards, not only in quality of light, which is absolutely important, and reliability of our systems, but also on cybersecurity. And, and, and cybersecurity for Signify means delivering um, systems to our customers which are designed and operated to maintain the confidentiality of data, their integrity, and guaranteeing the availability of our systems. Um, let me now over um, hand over the uh, stage to my colleague Barbara. She will go a little bit deeper in this topic. So why is security actually important for our products? Some people might say, hey, it's just a light bulb. Um, first, we see an increase of security threats, not only in numbers, but also in complexity. For instance, we see one group of hackers stealing credentials and then selling those on the black markets, and another one is buying those and using them to hack into systems. These systems are not only IT systems, more and more IoT systems are also targeted, like doorbells, uh, personal devices, medical devices, uh, GPS trackers, uh, cars, and even thermostats. In fact, there's a famous hack where the hackers use the thermostat of a fish tank in a casino, and they hack that one and use that as a stepping stone to hack the server of that casino and get to the money. Um, there are many other examples of um, hacks in IoT space. Uh, an older one is the Stuxnet worm, which uh, gained a lot of attention because that one was attacking PLCs in an Iranian nuclear facility and messing up the machines so that they broke down more often than you would expect them to. Um, Mirai botnet is one that was out there and is still out there for quite a while. That one is turning rotors into bots to use for the distributed denial of service attacks. 
Um, and we see that the Mirai botnet, because it was an open source, um, is being changed uh, um, to use other devices as well. So it keeps on growing and keeps adding on complexity. Another example are the GPS trackers that anyone could track or spoof. And only last year, the Tesla car was hacked. There's a yearly conference called Pawn to Own, which is challenging hackers to hack IT and IoT devices and earn cash prices. So you see that the threat is definitely growing. Now, what does that mean for lighting? Since any lighting product system or service that is connected either directly or indirectly to the internet can be defined as connected lighting and we see more and more devices getting connected you see that the attack surface is increasing exponentially the more lights there are and the more lights of the same type there are the higher the risk of a cyber attack because it is getting interesting to attack that so we really need to make sure that we have our security in order. Also, our market is expecting that from us. Uh, our customers expect us to build secure. We need to provide them with products and systems that are developed using secure design principles to minimize vulnerabilities, um, shift left, uh, build in security. Um, but next to that, if you buy something, that doesn't mean that it will automatically stay secure. So our customers also expect us to monitor worldwide threats to our installations and provide security updates when those are needed. They also expect us to provide advanced security capabilities. Um, more and more features are uh, becoming available in our products to enable advanced system security. For instance, the trusted platform module chips keep your device keys secure so that people cannot steal them and misuse them for other purposes. Our customers also need help to secure the installation. So we are helping them, we are educating them, we are providing secure installation and operation guidelines to make sure that um, once it is installed, it is built secure, it is installed secure, and it will stay secure. And then if anything happens, our customers want us to respond. So we need to have an incident management process that if something is wrong, the communication and reaction time are, are really important that we do that right. So those was the, are the, the environment and the market, but there's another player coming and that's the standards and regulations. Uh, we see that the standards and regulations are either in place or coming up um, one of the most known uh, standards in cybersecurity is the ISO 27001. That's already there for quite a while, although it changed some names and numbers. But I think it's already there for 25 or 30 years. Um, a, a, a relative new player in the standards is the IEC 62443. This is an international standard that addresses cybersecurity for operational technology in automation and control systems. So that one is used for um, um, professional lighting systems mostly. There's also the consumer security uh, guidelines and, and requirements, which is called the ETSI EN303645. That has been released three years ago now, and that is also quite important. And it is those two, the IEC 62443 and the ETSI EN 303645, are being raised as standards uh, in different uh, legislation as well. Then finally, I want to mention NIST, because NIST is also developing several standards for IoT security. One example is the SP800-213 for IoT device cybersecurity guidance. So you see there's a lot of standards out there and a lot of regulations are coming as well, Fabio. And yeah. you can tell more about that, right? 
No, I believe so. I believe so. And I let me take over again. Yes. There you go. Uh, so, yeah, let me add to the alphabet soup of uh, acronyms and numbers that Barbara started with because so it's, not that. Only, it's not only about standards, but it's also about regulation. Uh, we see, um, yeah, the, the, the more lighting becomes connected, the more lighting uh, gets to a certain extent connected also to uh, being a some, some part of critical infrastructure. Um, the, the more regulations is uh, uh, is coming in, and we see that in Europe and in the US. So in Europe, we see the the red uh, equipment, uh, the red directive, so radio equipment directive. Uh, products needs to comply to these new cybersecurity requirements. Uh, um, and for products that are sold in the European Union uh, with the CE mark from uh, August 2024. We see um, developments in the EU Cybersecurity Act, uh, which is uh, expected to be released in 2023, if not already released, I think not yet. Uh, we see the EU, EU Cybersecurity uh, Cyber Resilience Act also expected to be released in 2025. We see a number of uh, other um, initiatives and directives from the European Union, including the NIS2, uh, which are um, basically security requirements and reporting obligations uh, uh, for, uh, for uh, specific uh, critical infrastructure. Uh, we see in the US um, uh, uh, regulations also coming directly from uh, uh, as, as a president executive order. Uh, we have this um, at Biden, uh, at President Biden executive order number 14028, uh, which basically requires the um, uh, requires the creation of uh, software bill of material uh, information that goes along with your products, uh, because one of one of the uh, issues with uh, with cybersecurity is. Um, a supply chain um, um, attacks, which are uh, related to the software bill of material, and uh, this was uh, issued in in, uh, in May 2021. So we see we see a, a, an explosion of requirements uh, uh, that we need to take care for uh, for for the, uh, the development and the deployment of our product security. But um, yeah, so let let me have another questions for you because. Um, what I would like to, um, to, to, to share with you today is about uh, some information about operational technology. We see all these uh, requirements and regulations, they need to be applied to IoT, they need to be applied to operational technology, which is, uh, um, we, we shorten with OT, but what is actually OT? Um, operational technology is basically simple, simple set, uh, programmable systems or devices, uh, which interact with the physical environment or manage devices that interact with the physical environment. Some examples of these devices are industrial control systems, building management system, fire control systems, physical access control systems. And uh, as we mentioned before, operational technology is becoming increasingly digital and internet connected. Now, uh, we didn't have this problem 20 years ago when the lighting was switched on with a switch. But today, um, operational technology has security concerns that were not uh, seen before. Um, when it was not connected, even, even a digital system, when it's not connected, had limited uh, cybersecurity vulnerabilities. But the requirements that we are receiving from our customers, the requirements that, that the market uh, really require uh, uh, ask for uh, enhanced flexibility, uh, enhanced connectivity, and and so basically uh, our operational technology is to a certain extent also exposed uh, and 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 vulnerability that used to be only uh, important for uh, information technology are now also um, impacting um, operational technology. So let me uh, go. To, a, uh, to the next slides where we actually share with you what Signify does to address cybersecurity uh, for our products, for operational technologies. 
So here I, I would like to stress uh, specifically um, the, 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 the following four aspects, the governance uh, and principles, our security by design, uh, security in the development process, our operations and management, and our incident management processes. So in the next slides, in the next few minutes, we will explain how uh, Signify addresses that. Barbara will uh, uh, start working uh, with you and, 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 and go through the entire process. Indeed. Let me first explain you about our governance. Uh, security is embedded into our organization from the security board at the highest level or central corporate security department, uh, the product security leads that are in the business divisions to the network of security architects and security champions embedded in the development teams. We all work together towards that common goal. Um, to support that, Signify maintains and develops its security program and capabilities, responding and adapting to industry trends and new and emerging security threats. So we try to keep our people updated on everything that's happening out there. And all our employees undergo a security awareness training and our security architects and development engineers, so the ones actually building connected lighting systems, receive more in-depth training and also certification. That means that we have employees in key roles that hold various industry certifications, such as the uh, Certified Information Security Professional, CISSP, Certified Secure Software Lifecycle Professional, CSSLP, or any of the other abbreviations that are uh, known to be important in our market. We also have, as part of our commitment to security, uh, a lot of participation in standardization bodies. For instance, we are working together with IEC on the IEC 62443 standards. We are working together with ANSI. We are working in the SEN Senelec workgroup that is currently developing the harmonized standard for the radio equipment directive. So we have many people within Signify that are working on security. Now, it is important to stress that security is to be implemented throughout the organization and be built in rather than bolded on. Our policies and processes should be aligned and certified against international standards for security of information and operational technology. And certification is also important as it demonstrates with facts, not only with words, our commitment to security. And that's why we certified our secure process development lifecycle, so the thing that we use to build products, on the IEC 62443 on the module 4-1, which is a certification on the secure building process. We also have a certification for our global software operations on the ISO 27001. And many of our products are already certified or being certified at the moment on either consumer or professional product security standards, like the 6244342 or the 33. So we are really trying to build in security, not bold on, and prove that we are doing well with our certifications. Now, this principle of security by design is extremely important. And every new product development should go through a set of security steps. And I will take you through these. Um, before we start at a project, uh, building a new product, we may have to make sure that governance is in place. So we need to assign a product security champion to that product and make sure that both the team members that are developing and the product security champion themselves have the right competences. Only then we can start creating the new product. Then in the requirements phase, we need to do a product security impact assessment. In this product security impact assessment, we uh, look at the environment and the type of product that we are going to uh, deliver and decide what kind of security level matches that. 
For instance, if you have a normal lighting system, you might want to have a standard uh, security level. But if you are developing uh, a lighting system for critical infrastructure, as some of our tunnel lights may be, you need a higher uh, level of security. Um, we also, in our product security impact assessment, look at the uh, requirements that our customers might have on security and any other things that might be needed to add to the product before we start developing. Then, once we have that, we do a threat modeling, including the security risk analysis. There we determine what needs to be added to the minimum security requirements that we already have. And we do a privacy impact assessment. If we uh, use any um, privacy relevant data, then it needs to have a privacy impact assessment. And it may well be that additional security requirements come out of that. For instance, um, uh, privacy related information, PII, uh, like names uh, and email addresses should be stored securely and encrypted. That's one of the requirements that should be met there. Then with the list of requirements, we go into the design uh, phase and we make an architecture, a secure architecture review. And then when the implementation starts, we have to make sure that all the steps before that are done. So we have a security check for development. During implementation, um, we need to make sure that there are no issues in our source code. So we have security code review. Most of that is done by scanners, by the way, although manual, uh, manual reviews are also done. We also look at our third party products. Um, one of the issues that you see a lot in software is that open source libraries are used and open source libraries um, can have vulnerabilities at the moment you start using them already or maybe after a while. So we have scanners in place that make sure that any open source libraries that we use are checked for any vulnerabilities. And if something is uh, shown, then the library needs to be updated. What's also important is hardening of the system. If there are any unused services or unused ports at the system, that should be removed or blocked. You don't want uh, an, uh, a port open so that people can connect to the device which was not intended to be used. Once the implementation is done, we move to verification and uh, uh, vulnerability assessment scanners are run. We are doing penetration tests before release and, of course, functional security testing. Both manual and automated testing take place. And then we have a security check for release and the product is released. But that's not the end of it. After release, we have to make sure that we monitor the product that we maintain the product and in fact the maintenance process is exactly the same as the development process so yes for any changes that we do we do a security risk analysis we do the scans we do the testing before it is updated and if something is going wrong then incident management need to be in place the teams need to know what to do, when to do that, and how to solve any issues that come up. So this is our security development lifecycle that has been certified on IEC 62443-4-1 as well. Oh. Oh, Fabio, back to you. Yes, let me take uh, over again for the last time. Um, so. It's here, this is a promise, this is the last question for the audience. So what we would like to understand from you, and I'll ask you, is is it possible um, to understand, or to, to figure it out who's responsible for, for, for managing security? Because it, it is important for companies like Signify as a manufacturer of devices uh, to define where the boundaries lies. Uh, some activities, and maybe responsibility of the manufacturer, of course, but there may be 
maybe there are some activities that are not responsibility of the manufacturer. I would like to understand from you uh, what it is that you think is that for operational technology, is manufacturing fully responsible for security of the development, installations, uh, uh, deployment, maintenance, uh, operations, and dismantling? Or um, is that responsibility the system integrator, the installer, um, responsibility of the customers themselves, all of the above? In Signify, we have uh, a shared responsibility. We have uh, uh, we have created the, what's called a shared responsibility model, and we provide information to our customers and to our installers, uh, um, certified security installers, about uh, what are the specific activities that they are responsible for, so that they can uh, make an appropriate evaluation of risk and, and take proper care of the installations and operations. Um, the shared responsibility models is slightly different if we look at a cloud specific system and a uh, or a on premise specific system. For cloud system, most of the responsibilities uh, from a security perspective is with Signify. Uh, from development to installations to operations to maintenance to the commissioning. Um, Except for the specific item of managing the credentials and the, the example that I made before, most of the responsibilities are with the manufacturer. However, when there are on-premise component and the installation um, contains part on-premise and part uh, on the cloud, or fully on-premise, like some of our installation today, um, much of the responsibility or some of these responsibilities lies with the uh, certified system integrator with, uh, with, uh, and with the operator of the, uh, of the systems. Um, this is clearly defined into our uh, product security statement. We provide even a table where we say for this, this, and this activity, we, uh, this, is what, uh, this is who is responsible. And, and uh, that makes it very easy to, uh, to make sure that there are no activities that fall within the cracks of understanding between a manufacturer and a customer. Um, talking about a few other important things about operations and management, especially for our cloud systems, it's very important that we, uh, we share with you uh, what it means for um, to, to, to manage and operate the system security, at least for the cloud. Um, at, we perform activities such as security upgrades, vulnerability management, backup, uh, login, which are all necessary to make sure that uh, security is taken care of uh, from uh, uh, the beginning to the end. Um, we have a thorough incident management process to make sure that the, 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 uh, any incident or any event, I have to say, before uh, the, the, any security event has the right level of attention and the potential security incidents are taken care of, uh, including communications to customers, make sure that we have the right uh, people working on the specific incident and making sure that our customers are absolutely um, involved and, 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 and we share the information with them. Um, additionally, it, what's also very important is that we take uh, incident management very very seriously in, in the, and, and the learning uh, from, from this incident is actually used to improve our processes. We, we have a continuous improvement uh, process for all of these, uh, uh, for all of these activities. And um, finally, I think um, I would like to share with you um, some few other elements. So Signify uh, supports the, the coordinated vulnerability disclosure and encourages uh, responsible uh, testing of vulnerabilities by security researchers and customers. Um, we are open to receive all uh, uh, information from this researcher and the, uh, and the people that are finding some um, issues with our systems. Uh, we also have a security advisory page where we share uh, to our customers, with our customers, what they need to do uh, to take care of some vulnerabilities that they found in our systems, because no systems is uh, vulnerability-free completely. And uh, 
Yeah, and and we make this uh, this uh, security advisory uh, available for for um, for our customers uh, to make the right choices. And with this, I think uh, I would like to conclude our presentation. And thanks, Barbara, uh, for uh, supporting uh, for a great presentation on our security development lifecycle. 